Hey, Jordan Winger here, Senior Applications Engineer at Hawkridge Systems, and today I'd like to discuss coat pipe designs and how to create a template for those. So let's say you're working on your dream car design, and you've created a roll cage, and now it's time to actually manufacture these pieces. And as you can see in my design here, I've got a couple tubes that intersect each other, and I've got that nice fish mouth or cope style cut between those two tubes. And what I want to do is create a printable template on paper that I can wrap around the tube, scribe the appropriate profile, and then cut the, the right shape into the tube. So if we take a look at my design here, my roll cage design, I've created this using these solid weldment tools, and therefore I have a, a multi-body part. If I go into my cutlass folder, what I can do is right click on the body I want to create the template from, and insert that into a new part. The reason for doing this is that the process for creating this template is a bit destructive to the original geometry. And I don't want to make any changes to my roll cage design. I just want that to be in a new part on its own. So we'll select the template. We'll save the file. And now I can create that cut in order to be able to turn this into a sheet metal part and unroll the geometry. So I like to just create a quick sketch of a line going from the center of the tube to the outer diameter of the tube. And at this point, I also like to convert the outer edge of that tube. Just as a, a reference here, I'll change that to construction geometry. Now I can put a quick uh, reference dimension in here. I'll make that dimension driven. And then the reason I do that is that I create a global variable from that dimension. And I call it radius. I'm going to divide that by 2. And that way I can use that later on in the sheet metal parameters. But for now, we need to cut a small sliver out of the geometry here. So I'll use that line I've created to make a very thin cut extrusion. I usually put it to 0 0.005. And with that, you can see there's a very small sliver edge we can use now. If I go to my sheet metal tools, I'm going to insert bends. I'll select one of those little sliver edges that I've created from that cut extrude. And here's the two things where uh, a really important values come into play. One, it wants to know the bend radius of the sheet metal part. And I want to set the bend radius to equal the diameter of the part. So that's why I created that global variable. I can set this to the radius. And the other really important thing here is the bend allowance value. By default, SolarWorks uses a bend allowance k factor value of 0.5. The k factor value you want to set to 1. And the reason for that is that when SolarWorks flattens out a sheet metal part, it uses an equation for bend allowance. And in there is the constant of k factor. k factor essentially represents a neutral axis through the thickness of the sheet metal part. And when it's set to 0.5, it means that the neutral axis is directly in the middle of the thickness of the part. And what that also means is that anything, when you're bending this to the inside here, anything on the inside of that neutral axis is going to be in compression, and anything on the outside of that axis will be in tension, or be, it'll be stretched. So, if you think about a tube, and if I were to unroll that tube, the length of the unrolled tube should match the circumference of that tube. In order to have that match up, you want to make sure that you set your k-factor value to 1, which will move the neutral axis all the way to the outside of the model geometry and therefore the circumference and the bent uh, tube should match up. So with that we can click OK. We can flatten this part out here and we'll take a look at it. I'm just going to turn off my dimensions now. We can take a look normal to this. The view orientation may not match what you want to have in your model. That's just simply because we've inserted this into a new part from a body of an existing part. So the orientation may not match, but we can easily change this by selecting two faces and pressing the normal to button. What will happen is that the first face you selected will be normal to your view, and the second face you selected will try and point towards the top of the screen. Once you've done that, you can also update your standard views by clicking the space bar. You can say update standard views here. I can change this to be whatever view I want. Let's say I want this now to be my front view. So I'll click on the front view. It's going to tell me it's going to make those changes. And yes, I want to do that. Now you may have noticed that in the uh, feature tree here, 
that stock feature it created has an external relation back to the original mod geometry, which is great because that means if I were to ever change my roll cage design, say I wanted to change the angle of this tube or maybe even move it over a little bit, you can see how moving it over actually changes the shape of the cope cut between the two intersecting tubes. But if I do that, if I make a change to my roll cage design and I go back to my flat pattern, you can see it updates right away to have the new shape. And finally, to get this into a template, I simply need to make a drawing of this. We'll choose the size sheet that we want to print to. And I'll grab my front view. The important thing here is that you want to make sure you set this view to one-to-one -one scale. You should set to one-to-one, -one, so it's full size. If it doesn't fit on your sheet that you've chosen, that's okay. We can use the SOLIDWORKS break view option here. And I like to use the straight line cut. I'll place a couple on here. And you can, of course, set the gap size between them, maybe one or two inches in between those, those broken views there. You can set that. And we can also go into the drawing view, into the flat pattern, and turn on the boundary sketch. We want to see the uh, boundary edges of that model. And that will give us some items to dimension to. For instance, if I want to have the uh, overall length of this part, I can place that. I can also even dimension to those broken lines. I can say that on each end I want to have three inches. I'll do the same here, three inches there. And now you're ready to print this and basically cut along the dot dotted line here. Cut along the dotted line, cut along the uh, scribe shape there. We wrap that piece of paper around our tube, scribe the profile in the tube, and you're ready to cut. So I hope those tips have helped you for creating a template for a coke pipe cut. Thanks for watching.